Well, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our Wednesday night Bible study that we've been having on uh, each Wednesday night at six o'clock. I'm glad that you could join us by Facebook or YouTube and uh, continuing to pray for each one of you and praying that the Lord blesses you where you are, hoping that you're staying healthy and staying safe. And if there's any prayer needs that you might have, just let us know. You can make a prayer need by sending us a direct message to us on Fellowship uh, Facebook page or on YouTube, or you can contact us. You can email me. My email address is chbrke2012 at gmail.com. Also, I wanted to mention, if you know somebody in your, our community that maybe doesn't have internet or a computer or n no means of being able to watch these videos that we're putting out online, just send us a message and let us know somebody in their name and address so we can get them a DVD. We're sending some DVDs out to some church people that do not have access to the internet. So if you know somebody that needs to get these, we can get them a DVD, get it in the mail to them each week. So just let us know. We'd be glad to help out with that. But I just want to let you notice as far as updates we're still continuing doing our online virtual services every week and i know that easter's coming up but i'd like to say with that uh, what i'll be just to give you a preview what i'll be preaching on this sunday is the church the churches are empty but so is the tomb i want us to see that when it, when i preach on sunday morning and uh, see how that's significant for us today uh, as we're going through what we're going through and also, there's going to be some special treats for our young ones. We've got some things going on for that. So we'd love to uh, give you a surprise here pretty soon for Easter. So I'm looking forward to getting that done for you. But I want to go over a passage of Scripture tonight in our study that's a very familiar passage of Scripture. In fact, about a year or so ago, I actually preached on this passage of Scripture. And it's Psalm 22. We're getting closer to the Resurrection Sunday when Jesus was risen from the dead, but in order to get to a resurrection, you had to go through a cross. And in Old Testament, this is a foreshadowing of what Jesus would go through when he went to the cross. And it's really when Jesus was on the cross, he cried this out, the first verse of this, of this book. And I want us to look at it and I'll make a few comments as we go through it. And I want us to kind of put our eyes on Jesus and what he did on the cross is that Passover lamb that died for you and for me. So let's go ahead and we'll start with verse one of Psalm 22. And then I'm gonna read down, I'll make comments as I read down and we'll go through it. Psalm 22 verse one says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? So you see in this first verse, it is quoted verbatim pretty much what Jesus said when he was hanging on the cross. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In fact, I've mentioned quite a few times that when someone cries out or they mention the first part of a verse, they're quoting that chapter. So people who knew the Bible and knew uh, the Old Testament and knew the Psalms like the Pharisees, they were familiar with that and he was calling out that chapter. In fact, that's why they said he's calling out Elijah or he's doing this or let's wait and see what happens because he was going to see if he was delivered off the cross. That's what the Pharisees were thinking when he was crying out. So it says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and am not silent. Now, when you look at the New Testament passage of scripture, we understand that the wrath of God was placed on Jesus Christ when he was on that cross. So when Jesus is crying out, all of God's wrath was upon him and it felt like it was separation. When Jesus was crying out to God on that cross as the perfect lamb of God, 
He was crying out to God, but because of the wrath of God being upon him, he felt the judgment of God upon his life. So he says, oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not in the night season and am not silent. So we see that Jesus felt the separation from God when he was on that cross bearing the sins of the world. And he cries out, but God is passing judgment on putting that sin on Jesus Christ, the wrath of God being placed on Christ that we could be forgiven, but also Jesus is feeling the full weight of our sin. It goes on and says, but thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. So once again, Jesus, even though he was crying out, he understood the character of God the Father in that he knew that he was holy and sin and God cannot mix. So when the sin of the world was placed on Jesus, Jesus understood why God had to place that sin upon him, uh, why he had to put all the sins of the world upon Jesus and his sacrifice. It says in verse four, our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted in thee, thou didst deliver them. Talking about the fathers of old, those that trusted in him, trusted in God the Father, they cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. And he's kind of making that number one, the truth of God and those that trust in him, but also the comparison that Jesus had to go and had to suffer, that he was not delivered from death, but he was given up to death. But I am a worm, in verse six, but I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and the spies of the people. Now we understand that. Jesus came into Jerusalem and everyone was crying Hosanna, as we said this past Sunday. But now people are crying crucify him. And he compares this to being a worm. And a worm's pretty low on the, on the pole of, of popularity or the pole of importance. And he says, I'm nothing. I have become nothing. And I am no man. I have reserve myself to be nothing for men. He says, I'm a reproach of men. People scorn, people laugh, people uh, curse me, despise of the people. They can't even stand to look upon him because of the shame they have toward him. Verse seven, all they that see me laugh to scorn. They shoot out the lip, they shake the head. They're making fun of him. They're mocking him as the people did to Jesus. They were mocking Jesus. They were shaking the head saying, he trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him saying he delighteth in him. So people were basically saying when Jesus was on the cross, he trusted in God. Have him call out to God and let God deliver him. That's, they were mocking him in such a way. They were saying, well, let's see what your God can do now that you're on this cross. And it goes on and it says in verse nine, but thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breasts. God had a plan from the beginning. God the Father had a plan and a purpose for Jesus as he came to this earth. He lived to die for the sins of all mankind. And that is very important to understand that God didn't just put something together at the last minute. It's something that God had for thought that he had planned for the foundations of the world that Jesus would come to die. It says in verse 10, I was cast upon thee from the womb, thou art my God from my mother's belly. And we understand that uh, God uh, th through Mary, there was the incarnation of Christ. Christ was conceived by the Holy Spirit. God had that plan. And he says, thou have, you have been uh, with me ever since I was conceived. It says, be not far from me for trouble is near for there's none to help. In verse 12, it says, but bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. Now I've looked up the word bulls there and it's basically those that are proud, those that are in into war, into battle, to go against. Uh, we know that the Pharisees, Sadducees, all of those were coming together and criticizing Jesus and mocking Jesus, and they've all come around him to mock him. It says, they gaped upon me with their mouths as ravening and roaring lion. 
So they've come and they mocked him. They, they, they said he's been speaking blasphemous words. He's been doing things that are contrary to God. He says he's casting out devils in the name of the devils. And uh, all of these things, they're, they're mocking Jesus. It says in verse 14, I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. There's a couple of things you'll see there is that it talks about how he is exhausted, how he is totally destroyed. But I think two ways can be seen with this. I am poured out like water. Now you also remember when Jesus was on the cross, when he died, what poured out of him? Blood and water. But all these things were happening to him in exhaustion, not just from the crucifixion, but I believe the effect that sin that was on Jesus Christ was destroying him spiritually is that he could feel the full weight of sin upon himself and he felt totally exhausted. It says, my strength is dried up like a potsherd and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. So he, he talks about not only that, but the thirst that he has while he's on the cross. And he talks about how close he is to dying and he goes on and says in verse 16, for dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. So this is very foretelling as this is the book of Psalm 22 of the foretelling of the crucifixion of Christ and in what manner Jesus would go to be that sacrifice for all mankind is that even in the Old Testament, it prophesied that Jesus would be pierced through his hands and through his feet. I may tell my, of all my bones, they look and stare upon me. So we see that Jesus was on that cross. He was stripped of his clothes and they looked upon Jesus. They saw him in his shame on the cross and they stared at him. They uh, observed him. They marveled at him. In verse 18, they part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. And that is a direct prophecy of when Jesus was on the cross that the, the soldiers gambled cast lots for Jesus' clothes as he was being crucified on that cross. But in verse 19, it says, But be not far from me, O Lord, O strength, haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name unto thy brethren. In the midst of a congregation will I praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him, all ye seed of Israel. You know, one of the things that happened when Jesus actually went to the cross and died, he, things that happened when he died on that cross, when he gave up the ghost and died on that cross, there was earthquakes. There were things that happened when Jesus died that made people afraid. It says, praise him, all ye see. Jacob, glorify him and him, all ye the seed of Israel. So people observed the things that happened after Jesus died and, and some people believed after Jesus died. Verse 24, for he that not despised nor reported the affliction of the afflicted, neither hath he hid his face from him, but when he cried unto him, he heard. My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. Jesus came, he died, and we can give praise because of the death of Jesus Christ. Now we know it's an upsetting thing to think that someone had to die on our behalf, and that being Jesus Christ. But in the midst of that, we can praise him as well. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him with your heart, shall live forever. We're seeking God with all our heart through Jesus Christ in the sacrifice that he did. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord and all the kindreds of the nation shall worship before thee. That tells us right there that not just the nation of Israel will be affected, but because of Jesus's sacrifice and him going to the cross, every person has the ability to come and worship God because we're all saved through the blood of Christ. For the kingdom is the Lord's and the governor among the, the nations. All they that be fat earth, uh, all they that be fat upon earth shall eat and worship. 
They shall go down to the dust and shall bow before him, and none shall keep alive his own soul. A seed shall serve him, for it shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall, shall declare his righteousness to a people that shall be born, and he that he hath done this. So we see at the very end, Jesus died. We believe in him. We trust in him. And then we teach it to our next generation. That Jesus is that suffering servant in Psalm 22 that died for you and for me. And as we finish out this week, this being the Holy Week, we need to also focus on Jesus being that Passover lamb, that all the wrath of God was placed upon him that we could be forgiven. All the blood of Jesus was shed that God would pass over us even in our sin, that we would be forgiven of our sin and God would pass over us and we would be safe. And I wanted to close and just ask you to remember these next few days, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, what he gave for us to have life. But that's not the end of the story. We'll see Sunday morning that he didn't stay dead, but that God rose him from the grave. And that this coming up this Sunday and Easter, I know it's not going to be the same. We won't be able to gather. We will not be able to congregate. And like my sermon is going to be on Sunday, the churches are empty. But so was the tomb. And I want us to see that coming up this Sunday, that we as a church can be more alive now than we've ever been before. I thank each one of you for coming as we looked at this passage of scripture and coming on Facebook and YouTube. And if you have any questions about what we do or if you need any uh, help or prayer, just contact us. We'll be glad to pray for you in any way. And I pray that you have a good week and pray that you have a great Easter. Join us again Sunday morning on Facebook and YouTube as we'll continue talking about the resurrection. Let me have a word of prayer for you. Father, I just want to come to you in prayer and thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Lord, that you are the one that went to the cross and died for our sins. And Lord, I pray as we look at this week, we remember that Jesus came, he died. But Lord, coming up on that first day, he rose from the dead. Lord, be with each person, comfort them where they are, lift them up, help them in their time of need. Continue to be with us as a country. Lord, that you would minister to us as a country. Lord, that we would have a revival in our country. That we would be the church that you have called us to be. And Lord, just be with us throughout the rest of this week. May you get all the glory for it. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen.